Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to continue talking about cross cultural communication. And uh, last time, you may remember, I talked about thinking of many different possibilities when something happens, when you are communicating with foreigners or when you're communicating with somebody from a different culture. So, I told you to stop. Stop, think, observe, and then proceed. And to consider all possibilities before judging and to delay judgment. Now, I thought I would continue today by telling you a couple of stories about my own experience with cross-cultural communication. And all these stories come from my time in China. Okay? Story number one is about a printer. I went to the shop to buy a new printer in China, got a good deal, good price, took the printer home and discovered in the box there was no plug, no cable, no ink, no user guide. How would you feel? How would you feel? There are many possibilities. The first thing I thought was, I've been cheated. All Chinese people are cheats. Is that true? Then I calmed down and I thought, oh, maybe the store forgot to put the items in the box. Maybe it's an honest mistake. Possible. Maybe the items fell out of the box while it was being transported. Possible. Maybe you have to buy these items separately. They don't come with the printer. Possible. Which one do you think is true? Actually, it was the last one. I went back to the shop, they said, yes, 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 we told you very clearly you have to buy these items separately. My Chinese was too bad to understand. Okay? But it would have been very easy for me to go with number one. Second one. I went to the Great Wall. Beautiful place, Mu Tianyu, near Beijing. Had a lovely time seeing this fantastic construction. Then I felt very tired, so I ordered a cup of coffee, very cheap coffee, three-in-one Nescafe coffee. How much do you think it costs? Should be only a few GMB, yeah? I was charged 70 GMB. What would you think if you were me? I've been cheated, all Chinese people are cheats. It's possible. Are there any other possible answers? Tourist sites always charge higher prices. That's the way it is. Possible. Remote locations always charge higher prices. The Great Wall is far away from the city. It costs a lot of money to transport goods to that place. So maybe the sellers have to get this money back somehow. All the stores charge the same high price. It's not just one store. Every store is the same. Which do you think is true? Actually, all the stores charge the same price. I walked around all the cafes, all the restaurants, they all charged 70 GMB for a cup of coffee. But I could easily have chosen the first one. I've been cheated. Taxi. I took a taxi in China. The meter said 60 GMB. I gave 100 GMB. I took my change. I went back home. When I got back home, I found my change was only $20, not $40. What would I think? I've been cheated. All Chinese people are cheats. Possible. Any other possible interpretations? Honest mistake by me or the driver. Could be. Maybe some extra charges I don't know about. We talked about this last time. Could be road tolls, could be baggage charges, could be busy time charges. Could be. Actually, the real answer was this one. Because when I arrived home, about an hour later, a knock came on my door. I opened the door, there was the taxi driver. He had found me, he said, I'm so sorry, I gave you the wrong change, here is another $20. It was an honest mistake. But, it would have been so easy for me to jump, jump to number one and say, I've been cheated, all Chinese people are cheats. And notice the first sentence. It's very easy to go from, this guy cheated me, to all people are cheats. It's very easy cross-cultural communication. Last example, shoes. I went to a shoe shop in China, found some shoes I like. It's very difficult for me to find shoes. My feet are too big. So I found these shoes, very happy, went to pay. The shop owner said, no, 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 don't pay any money. Let me give it to you as a gift. 
I said, no, I must pay money. No, take it for free. No, 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 no. Eventually, I took the shoes for free. What did I think? I've not been cheated. All Chinese people are wonderful. Possible. The shop owner is a kind, friendly, generous person. Possible. Nobody wanted the shoes. So he was happy that I was taking them. Possible. The shop owner is very rich. He doesn't care if he gets money for the shoes. Possible. He maybe wanted something else from me. Possible. Which one do you think it is? I found out later it was this one. When I went back to the shop later, a couple of weeks later, there was a big picture of me in the window of the shop wearing these shoes and underneath the picture it said, I have international customers. <laughs> he used me for advertising, okay? Did I feel angry? Not so much. I got free shoes, okay? So, these stories tell you don't always jump to the first interpretation when you are talking to foreigners, when you are talking to somebody from another culture. There could be other answers. Okay. Now, a lot of the problems in cross-cultural communication come from expectations. And I'm going to give you another example of this. One of the enemies of cross-cultural communication is expectations. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a dinner and I'm going to show you a short video, and in this video, there are a number of people. Waverly is a Chinese woman, Rich is an American man, and they are having dinner at Waverly's home. And the two things I want you to think about are this. What do Waverly's parents expect from Rich, a boyfriend? And what does Rich expect from Waverly's family? Expectations. What expectations do they bring to the dinner. Okay, let's watch what happens. The next week I brought Rich to Mom's birthday dinner, sort of a surprise present. I figured she was going to have to accept Rich, like it or not. Uh, Rich, this is my father. I know. Happy birthday. I know. I know. And Mom, this is Rich. Great to meet you. Boy, something smells wonderful. I guess we came to the right place, huh? There you are. You know, Waverly has been telling me that you are the best cook.
She'd rather get rectal cancer. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, can you see the problem with that dinner is that the two sides had different expectations. The mother expected maybe her daughter to marry a Chinese man, so she didn't like that she had a Western boyfriend. Maybe the mother expected the rich to behave like a Chinese person, to only drink a little wine and to only to only uh, take a little bit of the food and to only praise her cooking instead of suggesting improvements. Rich, he behaved with the expectations of an American guy. He went in and he thought, I should offer a toast in return, I should drain my glass because that's polite, I should take lots of the food because this shows I like the food, and also if somebody says, offer suggestions, I'll offer suggestions because we are very straight talking in America. So, each side brought different expectations, the result was an unhappy meal, okay? It could have been very different if the expectations had been different. Now, because of expectations, where do we get them from? We get them from when we are very young, from our own culture. I'm going to share with you some expectations that I grew up with, things that my mom told me every day. She always used to say, don't make a noise when you eat. Imagine when I came to China. Don't speak with your mouth full. My mom said this to me all the time. Imagine when I come to another culture that does this. Don't chew with your mouth open. Don't do that. Help yourself to food when offered. We saw Rich did that. It was a mistake. Clean your plate. Don't leave any food. If you do this in China, people will keep putting food on your plate because that's the Chinese custom. Elbows off the table. Don't put your elbows on the table. So when I see people in Hong Kong or China do this, I feel uncomfortable. That's what I grew up with, elbows off the table. Offer to wash the dishes. If you go to somebody's home, you finish eating, you offer to wash the dishes. It doesn't happen here. Say please and thank you a lot. Open any gifts immediately. And don't ask personal questions about your salary or your wife or your husband or anything like that, your weight. So these are the things I grew up with. When I come to a different place like China or Hong Kong, when people don't follow these, I feel a very deep sense of unease, uncomfortableness, and I have to fight against that when I want to communicate with people from other cultures. You will face the same if you go to other countries. You will have a lot of expectations from Hong Kong, and people won't meet those expectations, and you have to fight your feeling of discomfort. Okay? So there's a danger of something called ethnocentrism. That means believing your culture is the best and other cultures are not so good. There is a danger of us versus them mentality. We are familiar with each other. We are comfortable with each other. We are all Hong Kong people. Those people over there, well, they're a little strange. Okay? And there's a danger of stereotyping believing that all people from different cultures are a certain way. For example, some British stereotypes that I've heard. All British men like drinking beer. Is that true? I don't. All British men love football. Is that true? I hate football. Sorry, Mr. Van <laughs> All British men are handsome gentlemen. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> All British people eat afternoon tea every day. No, it's not true at all. But these are stereotypes, and when British people don't meet these stereotypes, maybe you feel disappointed. What about some Hong Kong stereotypes that I learned before coming here? All Hong Kong students are top students. Maybe. All Hong Kong parents are tiger or helicopter parents. True? You can say more than me. All Hong Kong students are shy and obedient. True? No. All Hong Kong people care about is making money. True? All Hong Kong women are slim and sexy. Somebody told me this before I came to Hong Kong. Is it true? So, if expectations are not met, if we don't have British gentlemen and slim and sexy Chinese people, we feel disappointed. Stereotypes can make us feel disappointed when they are not fulfilled. So, my advice to you, when you meet somebody from another culture, 
keep your expectations low, then you won't be disappointed. And keep an open mind. Expect things to be different than what you expect, than what you believe from the stereotypes. And finally, don't be a fluent fool. What I mean by this is you can learn English here in TCSS, and your grammar can be good, and your vocabulary can be good, and your pronunciation can be good, and your speaking can be good, but if you cannot speak with good culture, if you are not a good cultural communicator, then all that language is for nothing. You are a fluent fool. So language and culture go together very closely. And I hope in the future you have lots of chances to practice what I've talked about today.